Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our second session in our Be Connected mini-series delivered by us here at the Beacon Foundation. Firstly, we wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of all the lands across this nation that we meet upon today. We wish to pay our deepest respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and to their elders past, present and emerging. And I also wish to extend that respect to any First Nations peoples joining us today. So today we are joined by Malachi, who is a project coordinator and support worker for National Disability Services. We will be talking to Malachi about adaptability in the workplace today. So hi Malachi, great to have you with us today. G'day, thank you so much for having me. So we're going to jump straight in. Um, you had a rather large career change from security guard to disability support worker. What drove you to become a support worker? So I've been a support worker for about five years uh, and when I left school I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do and end up as a security guard. I was a security guard for about 10 years and, and towards the end of that career I really wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't satisfied. I, I wanted something new, something changed. So I approached a really good friend and a colleague of mine and expressed my change and wanting something different and he said, you know, disability support is a really good career. You should try it. You'd, you'd really suit the industry. I had no idea, I had no clue what it was like or what the discipline industry was going to be part of my life, but I, I tried, I applied and three months later I became a support worker. Here I am five years later and I'm loving it and it's been such an amazing change and such an incredible part of who I am now. And I'm really grateful for the advice my friend gave and for really pushing myself to try something new and, and progress forward in, in my career. Fantastic, it's great that you were able to identify that it wasn't right for you and that you needed a bit more of a change in direction and something that you had passion about. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, we're actually going to have a look at a video now um, that shows you in action, Malachi. This shows what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and it actually helps frame up the rest of our questions to you during this session. So we'll have a look at that now. Hi, my name's Malachi. I work as a disability support worker for Live Tasmania. So about six years ago, I was working as a security guard and a fellow colleague of mine actually turned to me and said, have you ever thought about the disability sector? I had never once thought about working in the disability sector, but took his advice and applied with Liv. I signed up not knowing what to expect. Um, and the moment I started, I've fallen in love with this industry and can't imagine myself doing anything else. What I love about disability support is the personalization. You make really good friends with the people that you work with and the clients that I support. I love being able to take people out and seeing the reaction on their face when you're achieving their goals or just having fun. And, and a great aspect of that is seeing the impact that you're having on people's lives. So my typical day as a support worker involves getting up after I've gotten ready for the day. I then go meet my client either at their home or in the community. Generally, you would have to make sure that you've got everything planned out and again, preparing for that any worst case scenario because you really want to make sure that you are prepared for everything that if something goes wrong, whether it's bad weather, which has prevented you from going out, uh, again, bad attitudes that people just aren't feeling like they want to be part of the community or just that you yourself are run down and sick that you need to be able to accommodate for all those aspects. Some of the challenges I've faced during disability support is having to be there for people when you're physically tired or mentally drained. Having to put others first can be really hard sometimes when you're not feeling like you can be there for yourself. But you also have the opposite. You can have fantastic days where you've been planning an outing for a very long time and it goes really well. And you can walk back and say, we achieved that, we can do that next time. I've been a support worker with Braden now for about three to four years and he really inspires me. The, the challenges that he overcomes every day allows me to walk away going, my problems aren't that big. If he can do this, I can do this. He's been able to uh, overcome stereotypes. He's been able to overcome social isola isolation and able to really say, nothing's gonna hold me back. I'm gonna give it a go. No matter how nervous I am, I'm going to do this. Hi, I'm Braden. I have a form of cerebral palsy that gives me tight muscle tone and, and means that I have difficulty in my core with balance. And I use a K-frame, which I've forgotten the abbreviation for. I don't know whether it's Keebler or Kana or whatever it is, but I, I use that to get around the house. I've been working with, with Malachi for roughly, roughly three years. Um, 
it's been it's been going really well for me. I, I, find, I find that my, be, my, my best times that I've spent with Malachi are being able to go out, being able to go to a place like Area 52 and look at all the comic books and getting getting upstairs who knows how and looking at some of the video game tournaments that they have going on. It's fantastic to see that. Love that video. Very inspirational. It looks like you have a lot of fun. Well, always. always. <laughs> So I want to jump in now to talking about adaptability, which is what this session is about. And thinking about your decision to move from security guard to support worker, but also back to maybe your very first job when you were younger, how important has adaptability been in your career journey and how has your ability to adapt changed as you've moved through those different roles? Adaptability has been so vital to me from the moment I started work, going into new situations, learning new skills, even studying and qualifications involved me to adapt to new teachers and new learning methods. In security, I had to adapt to different people, different cultures, different religion and every day and dealing with them and, and how you have to adapt to who someone might be different from the person you were dealing with before. In disability, as you heard in the video, every day is very different. It's a very personal experience and you don't know what's going to be happening, whether it's weather, transportation or who you are yourself. Being able to adapt to how you're feeling and what you're doing to overcome that and then get the goals where you're going forward. It's a rewarding process being able to think differently and then adapt to your professional workplace. You're able to come at things very differently, use your creativity to come up with different techniques and have that adaptable ability to see the bigger picture. It's been very personal and it helps you in your personal life to deal with different situations, whether again, you're, you're coming down with something, maybe you're a little drained or you haven't got the energy. Having those skills to adapt to that really helps that you can give 110% every day. It's something we learn every day in our professional and personal uh, lives, but you utilize it very, very clearly in your career progression. It was so important to me when I changed career and I made that decision to go from security to disability because they're completely different industries and a different skill set. And again, I didn't know. I had no idea what it was like. So I had to be able to adapt to that. I had to go into a new workplace with new work colleagues and adapt to that situation and take on board all the advice uh, and the, the learning that I was going at the time. Yeah, and I, I think adaptability is so crucial in the time that we're all currently in. So it's, it's really topical at the moment. Mm. Um, you've got a fantastic job, but it obviously requires a lot of energy and commitment um, from you. So what personal traits do you think are suited to a role as a carer and support worker? Oh, fantastic. You know, creativity is really important. And I think often when we think about our careers, we don't think of creativity. But I love to think that you should use your imagination in any career or profession you're in. Come up with something different. Look at it at a different angle. You may revolutionize the job that you're in by using that creativity with you to personalize your experience. Uh, in disability, we use a lot of our imagination to think differently. How do we approach something differently? How do we utilize what's around us to create that support structure to achieve those goals, to go on adventures, to get into the community? If a place isn't wheelchair accessible, how do you use your creativity to get to that location? Uh, if the buses aren't running or they're not on time, how do you use your creativity to think outside the box to tackle that situation? So being creative is such an important role and a important part of who you are as a support worker. Uh, as well as communication and I love communication we communicate in so many different ways and if text message email body language music this is all a form of communication that if you love talking you love socializing and you love being able to express yourself it really can help you be a good support worker and I wouldn't be a support worker if I hadn't communicated with a friend so it's so important to use your creativity and your communication to really shape who you are professionally and personally to really become the best person you can be and I use these skills every day as a support worker to achieve goals to get out in the community and to really help others um, achieve what they want to. Absolutely. Fantastic to have such great creativity and, and energy. You bring a lot of energy to it, which is fantastic. <laughs> so not only are you a support worker, but you also work with your team back in the office as a project manager and do a lot of coordination of those team members. So how would you support a team member or a friend who's having a hard time adjusting and adapting to change? 
Listening is a really important skill to have, uh, especially what we call active listening, which is you don't have any opinions, you don't have any views, you just really take in what that person's saying and you listen to what they're going through and you use examples from your own life to say, I've been through something similar, this is what I would do. When people are lacking energy, and we have it a lot when we're in a professional career, when we're there for other people, you need to really lean on others, work as a team. And when you are having someone who is struggling or maybe is nervous or is in a new environment or a new situation, being able to support them is so important. So you use that listening skill to listen through what they're going through and to help them achieve what they need to, to get upskilled. Maybe they need to go to another course, maybe learn something different or show example. You know, this is what I do. This is what I do in that situation. You know, maybe you are finding it really hard to get into the community or it's a new environment, new suburb. And you just listen to that and you say, hey, you know what? Let's look it up together. Let's go online. Let's research this. Let's talk about this. Having that ability to listen and talk is so vital. It, it takes a lot of stress away. You understand that someone is there for you, as well as having other people's opinions sometimes allows you to see a different perspective, allows them to look at it from another angle and you go, oh, that's a really good point. I didn't realize that. So having that active listening and that communication with that individual can help prompt them up and support them to be there for them, to walk with them. Uh, you know, we, I use a great saying in my career, which is inch by inch, life is a cinch. So small steps. You know, take that small step to get to that next where you need to go. Uh, if you're trying to get 100 yards, just go one yard first, one meter first. You know, those small steps helps that progression. So having that active listening and supporting your teammates really does help both you and them. Fantastic. And you mentioned upskilling in there. I'm going to put you on the spot here, if you don't mind, <laughs> just for everyone watching today. Can you give us an example of upskilling just in case someone doesn't understand what that means? Certainly. So um, we we'll use first first aid as an example. So in disability, we do first aid, which is a general first aid, bandaging, medication, um, you know, general first aid band-aids. Upskilling is where you look at maybe a certain skill set. And so maybe asthma or a certain part of that uh, first aid course and you learn that and maybe you, it's a specialized course that gives you that up skill so we start a basic first aid and then I do maybe asthma epilepsy you know emotional leadership it's learning that extra little skill set that maybe wasn't with the original curriculum so when you're going through your studies maths English it may be looking at something very specific and learning that so that's an up skill you're you're developing your skill a little bit more to give you a uh, better knowledge Fantastic. Great example with the first aid there. And it obviously opens up windows for you for future career dire direction and jobs in the future. Definitely. Yeah. It, it, every small bit of skill you learn, even soft skills, communication helps you in your, in your career progression. Yeah. Awesome. So we've actually come to our last question very, very quickly. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, you've made some really great points here today and you've obviously taken a really interesting career journey and learnt from all of your experiences. What can students do who are watching today to strengthen their adaptability skills? So try something new is always important. Putting yourself in a new situation allows you to handle that adaptable situation. You learn to adapt to something new. So really, my, my, you know, get out there, try something new. It is nerve wracking. It is definitely nerve wracking and it can be hard sometimes, but take those small steps to try new experiences, try new courses, new subjects. Um, even if you're struggling in school, just keep going. Just try something new, try a different pr profession, new career. So having that ability to keep going is really important because sometimes we can hit that wall and we don't know what to do um, if you're applying for a job for instance and you don't get it sometimes we feel really oh what do I do now it's really just try again keep going find another company find another career keep pushing forward because you really don't know where you're going to end up I had no idea I'd be here I had no idea when I left school that I would be in a situation where I love what I do but the fact that I kept going and I kept trying and kept pushing myself that little bit more has mean that I ended up in a career that I love and something that I'm passionate about. And you can have that too. Just keep going. No matter how tired you are, talk to your friends, rely on your teachers, your parents, your mentors, speak to them and you will end up in places that you never thought you could. So really just keep going because you will love the journey and the end result will be amazing. I promise you. So some fantastic advice. Thank you so much for joining us today, Malachi. Um, it's been great to have you on board. And um, thank you to everyone who's tuning in. And if you want to re-watch any of our sessions, they will be available on our YouTube channel for the duration of term two. 
and you can check out our full mini series schedule in the description below this video and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss a session. So thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you all next time.